What's up, Shadow People? Did you know that Friday, June 30th, Grixis Death Shadow took down the Modern Challenge? Well, if you didn't, now you do. So, Ali MTG ended up taking this Grixis Shadow shell, uh, swapped out essentially Ledger Shredders for Orcish Bowmasters, and ran it all through to or all the way through to first place in the Modern Challenge. So, of course, here on the channel, whenever we see a Death Shadow list that does well, well, we're going to go try it out. We're going to put it through its paces, see if uh, it performs reasonably well for us, see what kind of interesting interactions it kind of brings about, and see if there's anything we can learn from it. Any tech we might be able to, to pull away to apply to other lists of ours, or just see if, hey, this list itself, pretty finely tuned, pretty well positioned. So let's uh, let's go through the deck list real quick, and then we'll get going with the league itself. So in the main deck, you'll notice the four copies of Orcish Bowmaster, a card that I've been a little critical of in some of the Demir builds, but I haven't had a chance to try it out in Grixis. So really cool that the card was able to, to really shine this weekend and, uh, and take down that challenge. We did see it a win out of Yawgmoth, with Orcish Bowmaster, but it also had like the ring and halfling and all that. So this just like just the Bowmaster, only uh, Lord of the Rings card finding its way into the 75. Otherwise, a uh, pretty traditional Grixis build. We've got the Shadows, Thoughtseize, Dragon's Rage Channeler, Ragavan, 3 3 split of Unholy Heat and Lightning Bolt. I know a lot of people like going up to the four bolt with Underworld Breach. But unfortunately, Bolt does just miss a lot of stuff in the format, uh, like not hitting Omnath, not hitting opposing Merc Tides, potentially scammed Furies, uh, a bunch of stuff like that. Means it can be a bit of a liability. Four copies of Drown in the Lock for Expressive Iteration. Two Underworld Breach is kind of the top end finisher card. This is where a lot of people want those four Bolts to be able to have the option to like land an underworld breach, maybe bolt your opponent like three, four times for lethal. Um, honestly, you don't really need to see multiple bolts to set up that scenario most of the time, but we'll see. And then the four copies of Orcish Bowmaster. If you haven't seen this card yet, it's a one in a black for a one, one with a flash. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target and creates, uh, or a mass is one. So it makes a, uh, Zero zero army token, orc army token, and then puts a one one counter on it. Uh, and then whenever your opponent draws a card, if it's not the first card they draw in their draw step, then it pings something again and amasses one. So that one one army gets another counter, becomes a two two, or if it's two two, becomes a three three, whatever the case may be. And it does stack. So your opponent draws three cards at once, a la Brainstorm and Legacy, then you would get three Bowmaster triggers, get that work up to a 4-4, four, four, uh, ping your opponent three additional times. So in the face of things like Season Pyromancer or uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker going off, you can potentially see Bowmaster putting in some good work. In the sideboard, a copy of Mystical Dispute, two Dress Down, two Fluster Storm, Two Turok Dread Cantor, uh, Culligan's Command, a Terminate, two Chalice of the Void, two Engineered Explosives, an Unlicensed Hearse, and Gigantha as our companion. The only, uh, only thing Gigantha does not do well with is the Chalice of the Voids in the sideboard. But other than that, Gigantha very, uh, very free in a list like this. Not a lot of reason to go up to the double blue pips especially if it risks losing access to that companion because as we've noticed over the last few months or even the last couple of years companions pretty solid i have a lot of play to it so anyway let's uh let's go ahead and jump into the matches replay all of those and talk about some of the lines here and there and uh maybe learn something Slowly let the camera go off. Match comes back. Round number one. So we do win a die roll. Always nice to see in modern. 
Uh, opening hand, pretty solid. We've got a turn one Ragavan. If they end up killing our Ragavan, we do have a backup. Uh, I really like seeing this mix of interaction for creatures and interaction for spells. So, like, my opponent goes for a Blood Crypt, Unholy Heat, kills our Ragavan. So, very likely a mirror here. We see Bowmaster off the top with Bobble, so fairly certain it's going to be a mirror. At least there's nothing yet that would make me believe otherwise. So I decided to go for this channeler. I know they have a bowmaster. I'm kind of hoping that I can respond with like shooting the bowmaster, maybe flip over delirium. Uh, they go for a lightning bolt that I get to try to spell pierce and then bowmaster in response to the spell pierce. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't just like pay for the pierce. Uh, because even if I flip over Delirium off this Dragon's Rage Channeler, I can't save it from the Pierce. I'm just like trying to get my opponent to kind of tap out, but they do know about the Ragavan, so it makes a little bit of sense. Uh, they go for the Bowmaster, bolt the Bowmaster to try to flip over Delirium. Doesn't work out, so down goes Channeler, but we do untap and find our own Bowmaster, so we get to play Ragavan, bow down there, Orc token. Uh, we got a fairly good board presence going. It finds a shadow, we find a bolt, so now we get to be the first to like attack in. Uh, we usually say in the shadow mirrors, like the first person that attacks is probably the person that's losing. Because at the end of the day, like if I attack you first and don't kill you, then your shadows are a lot of the times bigger than what I'm presenting. So just hoping to find something relevant off of our opponent's library, which we do not. But we find a breach. They find a thought. We should have added Gigantha to our hand there because there's nothing we could draw that costs more than two mana. And we've got the treasure tokens. So even if our opponent did find something relevant, uh, we could counter it if we did top deck like a Drown in the Lock. Here, I could shock in and play the Gigantha, but our hand, our Ragavan here is like pretty stonewalled. So I'm kind of thinking my opponent's going to get free reign for a couple turns, and I'd rather preserve that life total, kind of give myself a little bit of a buffer here. But unfortunately, this Orc token and Orcish Bowmaster are going to kind of stand in the way of Ragavan. Um, uh, decide to spell pierce underworld breach just to make them pay the extra mana so they can't go as crazy with stuff in the yard. They can still like kill the ragavan, get a few free spells, like a few baubles and, uh, draw a good bit. So I'm kind of giving myself like a draw, maybe two draws to find a lightning bolt. And if I don't, then pretty game over. Opponent ends up drawing two cards. We find a heat. Uh, unfortunately, not a lightning bolt, but we can heat like the Dragon's Rage Channeler if we so choose to buy ourselves a little bit more time. Opponent dashes a Ragavan, so we're definitely going to heat that instead because that becomes uh, a clock as well as card advantage. And we really can't deal with that right now, so just... Open bolt, no bolt, got it. So even though it's not quite the way I expected it to go, the adage stays true. We made the first attack, so we lost the game. Uh, sideboarding in the Grixis mirror. I'm usually taking out like Thoughtseize really aggressively. In this case, uh, I took out one Ragavan and a couple Dragon's Rage Channelers um, and Spell Pierce. Mainly because Pierce like gets outdone really, really quickly. People are hitting land drops uh, fairly consistently. But going forward, I think I'm more likely to board out maybe all of the Ragavans. Because it's just going to get stonewalled by Bowmaster extraordinarily quickly and extraordinarily easily. And I just don't think it's going to be worth like trying to pick fights over Bowmaster tokens to get Ragavan through. I think I'd rather just rely on Dragon's Rage Chandler that has the ability to get above uh, 
uh, above the tokens and attack through that way. So opponent does get a couple quick shadows here. We go for the terminate. They could have a spell pierce, but because they didn't have a spell pierce into turn, I'm assuming they don't have one on my turn. So bolt plus bowmaster lets me take down the second shadow. They do find a a bowmaster for my bowmaster, and then I find a bowmaster for their bowmaster. Now I can attack in for one and. All I can really say is, uh, spoiler alert, I end up playing the mirror twice this league, and it has got to be one of the most, like, mentally draining, nothing happening mirrors that I've ever seen in my entire life. Um... And it's because you spend so many of these turns just going like, I should have gotten the land. I got the shadow because I didn't actually look at my life total. I kind of figured I was at 12 or less. Um, but I should have just gotten the land. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, it ends up being like this just back and forth cap fest of just like, Bowmaster, your bowmaster, bowmaster, your channeler. Well, then I bowmaster your bowmaster because you bowmastered my channeler. And now there's a ragavan out here somewhere that can't do anything because of the tokens. Well, I'm going to bowmaster your ragavan. And like nobody's actually drawing cards because the only thing that says draw on it is Mishra's bobble. And if your opponent's got a bowmaster out, you just like either A, are in a position where it doesn't matter. Like you've got a shadow and you just take the ping or B you don't crack it and Bowmaster doesn't do anything except be a, uh, uh, what's it called? Timely, not timely reinforcements, uh, raise the alarm, two mana, two one ones. So it is really interesting that that's kind of what the mirrors devolved into, but who knows? Maybe it becomes more interesting. I really think that a card like Kroxa is going to emerge as a mirror breaker again. Because if you've got people just like bow mastering everything, then a Kroxa could come down and like get the triggers regardless of whether a bow master is there. It can attack in, get the discard, get the damage. It doesn't care if it gets chump blocked because you're still just getting cards or damage. So, opponent thoughts these are underworld breach. I was a little surprised they didn't take our uh, bowmaster there, but I'm not gonna go for bowmaster on the channeler and risk them having an instant flipping over delirium and just like wiping out that turn. Um, let's talk about this. This is interesting and important and worth bringing up. So we resolved the unlicensed hurts last turn, and our opponent plays a shadow passes. They've got one card in hand. I think that there's a chance the card is Drown in the Lock. So at the end of their turn, I eat two cards out of my yard, go down to two cards. That way, uh, when I go to my turn, if I choose to cast like a Bowmaster to shoot their Channeler or a Drown in the Lock on their Shadow and they respond with a Drown in the Lock, I can eat another card out of my yard to keep them from countering my Drown. Uh, I don't need delirium at the moment i don't need a bunch of cards in my yard because i only have the one breach left in the deck one's already gone so i don't care about my yard that much but i would like the ability to make sure my drowning lock resolves now obviously they could have like a spell pierce and it doesn't matter but i figured i have the ability to play around the drown so i'm going to so you'll see me like go for the shadow here first because if they drown then i let the dragon's rage channeler trigger resolve i let the drown resolve because i can't stop a drown and lock on my one drop but then i can follow it up with like eat a couple cards out of your yard if you have delirium get a bow master kill the channeler have a blocker for the shadow and kind of reset the entire board presence uh, but because they let the shadow resolve now I have the ability to drown something on their side. And if they try to like drown back, then I can unlicense her and eat a couple things, resolve the drown, whatever. 
But opponent goes for an attack here. I decide I'm going to crew up the hearse because this makes them make the first move, whether that be killing the hearse or whatever, because if they don't make a move and kill the hearse before I block, I get to block, go to eat stuff, and now they have to make an action. Uh, so this is what I meant by them having to make the first move. It could just be like a bolt on the bow mast or a bolt on the uh, the hearse, which is fine. I get to keep my shadow, untap with a drown in the lock, a fetch land. A okay. Uh, they go for a terminate, which I guess is the card that they had in hand. I decide to drown in the lock, the terminate, and they scoop up the game. So sometimes it works out that you're able to piece together a little bit of a turn there, play around some stuff that didn't even matter if you played around because your opponent just didn't have that thing, and uh, pick up a win. So this is on to match number two. We're on the draw. Uh, hand's not bad. Like, we've got Channeler. We've got Bolt is interaction. We're on the draw, so we have a couple looks at another land. Uh, Marsh Flats with Blood Crypt. Almost assuredly scam, and then the grief kind of confirms that. So they end up going empty-handed here and just taking a bunch of uh, my stuff. I draw the Unholy Heat, which means if I can find a Fetch Land, I get Delirium Online. If I find a Mishra's Bobble, I can. If I find a Bolt, I can just kill the grief with that. Uh, but we find a Bobble, Bobble them on their upkeep. Hope they don't have an Undying spell, which they don't. So now we get to get our turn with the bobble draw, draw for turn. We'll take a Ragavan. Dothy's got nothing in the yard right now since they missed their third land drop. I don't want to crack this fetch until after they've committed something to the Dothy, whether that be attacking like they did or sitting back and waiting till their end step because I don't want them to have like a Blood Moon or a Season Pyromancer or something like that and just need a Fetch Land to get that active. Like, now if they decide to go for Dothy and do a Fetch Land, that's fine. I've got this Fable that I took off their library. That'll help me make the mana I need. I've got a Ragavan connecting. Like, you can have your Fetch Land now. But that turn before, I just wanted that one more turn of passing back and forth before anything really happened. Um, picking up bolts, nice. Got the channeler. Sideboarding against scam. Uh, boarding out like a couple thought seizes, a couple drowning locks because I'm bringing in some grave hate, like unlicensed hearse. Boarding in things like Turok because I just want a good two for one in the matchup. So here we get to do the thing. This is like the play everybody's thrilled about with Bowmaster. Opponent goes for a season's Pyromancer. We get to respond with flashing in a Bowmaster. This is like, this is it. This is the do or die for Bowmaster. Like if it looks good against season Pyromancer, then maybe there's a chance that this becomes a, a card we're playing going forward. But if it looks bad here, then this is like the best it's ever going to be. So we get to start off with shooting their Bowmaster. They resolve Spyro. We get two more triggers. We get to see they only make one token. So we're going to shoot off both their tokens. Keep our 3-3 three, three army token after the triggers resolve. Uh, that'll let us attack into their Spyro if need be. Since we drew a second red removal spell, I decided to just go for the damage. Uh, also, I used Bolt instead of Heat intentionally because if my opponent did have like a scammed Fury here, then Heat is going to be one of the ways that I can get out of that situation. But the Bolt would not be able to beat a scammed Fury. Um, Assuming they have like two undying effects or whatever. So that's why I used the bolt over the heat. And since they decided to play Dolphy, I get to kill that anyway. So here, just trying to find a couple extra, um, an extra black source so I can potentially kick Turok next turn. 
play out the first Turok just to have like something on board. If I get a chance to kick the second one, the first one will grow anyway. It doesn't really change, but I get to go ahead and attack with it. Uh, I could save back the Turoks to try to set up like a kick Turok into next turn, another kick Turok. But I've got this expressive iteration too, so I don't want to be like locking up all my turns with just four mana him to Turok. Haha, <laughs> him to Turok. But my opponent goes for Spyro, ditches two cards, which grows Turok into untap. I kick Turok, get the last two cards, and they decide they don't want to play Magic no mo. So, on to round number three. Pretty cool win against Scam. On the draw against Ignoble Hierarch, so Yogmoth almost 100%. Uh, with that being the case, I want to Thought Seize to potentially hit a Grist, which we do. Because Grist on the play out of Yawgmoth is like just about as close to unbeatable as we can get. Uh, I wanted to shoot this Ignoble Hierarch, but I think I'm still going to. And just like try to mitigate damage a little bit with bodies, but ultimately like and them hitting, or I'll put it this way. I wanted to shoot the Noble Hierarch or Ignoble Hierarch to stop the mana production. But when they top decked the Delighted Halfling, it kind of became, okay, well, it doesn't really matter anymore if I try to stifle the mana production. Like, they're going to have the, uh, the mana they need. They end up cracking this Peatland, which at least lets me make another army token. So maybe I could start standing in the way of Geist, which is kind of what Orc, uh, Orcish Bowmaster is doing here, is just being a, hey, I'm going to ping a Strangle Root Geist, hopefully stop some undying. But it's got a Yawgmoth on top of their library, which thankfully they shuffle away. So we know their last card is Besaju, I'm pretty sure. Whole mess of undying creatures, though. Uh, if I can help it, I don't want to tap off of this blue in case they have a Court of Calling. The second Ragavan there is to put a creature in the yard uh, due to the legendary rule to allow Dragon's Rage Chandler to start attacking. Those were pretty gummed up on the ground, but at least Chandler has a chance to swing in the air and pick up a few points of damage. Uh, here, so my opponent top decks a Yawgmaw. And they have the ability to, like, draw cards, shoot the Bowmaster, draw more cards, whatever the case may be. Um, I don't think they really need to make a lot of actions right here. Because they start off by sacking. So, I'm going to start by drowning the locking the Yawgmoth. Uh, and it's mostly because the earlier in this process you start the less that they have the ability to do. Because, like, now one of their undying creatures is just out of the equation completely. If I wait, it might let that creature back in. I know I've got double Bowmasters pinging them when they draw, but my opponent's got plenty of resources to be able to, like, kill off the Bowmasters. And they kind of started to... I say it kind of started to. They did go to ping off the Bowmasters, which I decided to just point the triggers at them because pointing the triggers at the creatures really doesn't matter. Uh, they continue to sack stuff off. Just, I'm guessing, looking for endurance. And they don't find it. I think this was kind of a mistake by my opponent. Uh, they started off sacking things on their turn, and I really don't think they needed to. Uh, I think they could have waited and either done it on my turn or um, not sacked that much and seen if they could find like a court of calling on their next turn with all their mana up to potentially hit like a blood artist or something where they'd be able to kill the... Um, the Bowmasters, and then if I pointed triggers at them, they'd have plenty of life gain. So 
I think this was kind of a mistake to force the issue right then and there when you're tapped out. Can't really do much. Don't have a way to gain life. Uh, sideboarding against Yawgmoth. Ragavan is horrendous. Between, like, Young Wolf, um, what's it called? Wall of Roots, Grist, Strangle Root Geist, even now with the uh, Delighted Halfling, so much just stands in the way of it. Alright, Conan's gonna drop a Hepatra. Since we drew the land, I was going to go for the upkeep bolt if we didn't draw the land off the bobble. But since we drew it, I got to kind of save the bolt. Get down another channeler, bolt the, the Hepatra there. Now we're just trying to get Delirium online so we can really start attacking. Breach isn't doing anything for me at the moment. I guess I should have said board ends, uh, EE, one of the ones I'm boarding in, because there's really not a lot to board in out of Grixis. Unlicensed Hearse is coming in. Drink boards for a young wolf. This was a, a really, really good play out of my opponent here. So they went for the Yog Moth, attacked him with young wolf, whatever, um, and then went to. I went to crack the EE. They went to put a counter on both of my Dragon's Rage channelers. And then when I went through, like I was planning on trying to set up Underworld Breach with bolts. They top decked another Endurance somewhere in their uh, like two cards they drew or three if you count the draw for turn. Found an Endurance. There's no way to respond to this to save my channelers. As soon as the Endurance hits my yard, the Channelers die to state-based actions. I can't, like, have them nuke my yard and then try to fetch and bolt and maybe flip over Delirium and save them. Like, no, nah, they're, they're gone. Uh, also means that I no longer have the cards I need to Breach for Lethal. Now, I could have started the turn with Breach. But as we see, they would have had the endurance anyway. I was just hoping that I could get a couple points of damage in so that Breach would definitely be able to kill instead of like maybe kill. Uh, this dress down, I should have cast it second main phase. I waited till end of turn. They had the Bowmaster anyway, so it really didn't matter. But I waited till the end of turn, but I needed that dressed down in the graveyard so bit of a mistake thankfully like we were dead anyway uh on to game three let's check the mulligan decision Come on. make sure i didn't yeah one lander dragon's rage channeler on the play i'd maybe keep a hand like this on the play if i also had like a bolt and a bobble or something, like stuff to do for one mana, but not having anything to do outside of Channeler means pretty easy shit. Uh, this bobble binning anything that doesn't say spot removal because I would like to kill a mana dork and kind of stay ahead on board, which is why you see this upkeep bolt here, like give myself the chance to surveil Get delirium in the yard. I have the thought seeds to follow up. Like I've got a little bit of an advantage right here. Let me push the issue. Uh, I did not expect my opponent to go for the Hepatra here. Could play the iteration, try to find a land, play the shadow, but I figured the Bowmaster was like a pretty safe play. If they top decked a Bowmaster of their own, it's a little unfortunate which turns out they did, but they wanted to be mana efficient, so they didn't use it. Uh, I would love a fetch land, but at the end of the day, like a red source to be able to heat is about as good as I can ask for. Stop a bit of the mana production, makes Court of Calling a lot worse. I was hoping they wouldn't have a second black source, but they did find the Overgrown Tomb. 
So if they find a Yog Moth, they will have access to it. Ground Lock's a good draw. Thoughtseize is going to catch that Drown in the Lock. Uh, throwing bobbles in the yard because I don't want to bobble in the face of Orcish Bowmaster. So. Plus, I'm just looking for like this, get lands, cast Underworld Breach. My opponent's empty-handed. and like, let me just bolt out. Um, I say Underworld Breach. That was absolutely a Snapcaster Mage. And if you can't tell the dis difference, then you've just been out of the loop too long. Um, this is match number four. We've got Bobble. We've got a couple Thought Seizes. We've got Bowmaster. We Thought Seize and see Double Cathartic Reunion, Golgari Thug, Stinkweed Imp, uh, two Fetch or two Shock Lands. And we saw Bobble or Bobble saw Dark Blast on the top of their library. So Dredge, horrendous matchup. Not a good hand against Dredge. Maybe we can find some way to to sneak a, across a win, but without team or battle rage, dredge gets exponentially worse. So not playing out a creature because I do not want to give them a target for dark blast. Can't get a shadow down, get a channeler. Uh, so our opponent's got the Dark Blast, Stinkweed Imp, Golgari Thug. We can Unholy Heat if they play out a blocker next turn. They could Dark Blast, kill the Dragon's Rage Channeler, untap and dredge, but we got a Shadow down. Um, if their top deck right there was a land, a Black Source, then they'd be able to go to their turn, upkeep, Dark Blast the Shadow, dredge the Dark Blast, Play land for turn, dredge or uh, dark blast of shadow again and kill it. I'm really banking on it not being another black source. Well, dang, they flip over creeping chill. So I was like, okay, maybe they trigger that. My shadow's alive. No, nope. yeah, they smartly do not do that. So now finding second bow master. Our plan just becomes try to race like hope dark blast whiffs hope that we're able to just like buy a turn or two. Shoot them with bow master untap play another bow master to pump up our army token by one just whatever we can to try to push through a little bit of damage. That way, maybe if we find like a lightning bolt and our opponent doesn't find too many chills, we might have a chance. And they are taking one off the city of brass to keep playing these stinkweed imps, so that's kind of cool. Don't want to pierce. Silver smoke ghouls, fine. Uh, this attack, I ended up holding back this second bowmaster because I was like, all right, if they dredge over a creeping chill. And they attack with Silver Smoke Ghoul. I'm dead. Um, I probably should have thought about the fact that this is six damage. And so if I top deck a bolt, they're not dead if they choose not to tap City of uh, Brass. But at the end of the day, I kind of figure if they hit a Creeping Chill, I'm not winning this game anyway. There's one more. Maybe we can find a bolt. No, but we can find an underworld breach for. What can we find an underworld breach for? I don't even think this kills them, honestly. So we breach, we get unholy heat, heat the stinkweed, attack in with everything. Oh, we got the channeler in the air. Um. Uh, no, that's still short. So we would go Unholy Heat, the Stinkweed, attack in with everything. They block Narc Amoeba on the Channeler, Silver Smoke Ghoul on the 2 2 token, and two Bowmasters get through. And then we just get 
maybe three baubles. So we'd have nine cards in our yard, flip over whatever we see off Underworld Breach. If it's a bolt, we just kill them. Um, which actually, that would be the right play to cast the Underworld Breach, flip over the top card with Dragon's Rage Chandler, cast the bobble, flip over the top card, because at any point, if we just find a lightning bolt, our opponent's dead, and we don't have to worry about continuing. Uh, but if we don't find a lightning bolt flipping over, then we can unholy heat the stinkweed imp and attack in and just hope that they don't dredge over another creeping chill. So very, very play the odds there, but we did have a bunch of looks at a bolt at least. Three in the deck. Reasonable chance. Sideboard against Dredge. Um, pray. Board out some stuff. Board in some stuff. Pray harder. Brought in like Fluster Storms. Unlicensed Hearse. EE. Because it can be good at clearing out um, an army of like prized amalgams or narc amoebas or something to get an attack through. But ultimately, like I said before game one, without access to Team or Battle Rage, the matchup is pretty rough. That being said, Salt is into an unlicensed hearse and your opponent mulling to five is a potential out. So I'm going to cast this Salt Seas. Opponent's going to respond with Otherworldly Gaze. So I'm going to make sure that I bobble them before the thought sees resolves especially since they left a card on top so they left a land on top their hand is golgari thug dark blast they didn't cast the thug so i get to get down this hearse like unimpeded if they i should it's not like a big deal right here um Actually, I don't think I should respond to this. No, I 100% should not respond to this Bloodstained Mire because my opponent took a natural draw, so if they hit like a cathartic reunion, I need to be able to exile the dredgers. Anything else, I don't think I really care about. Uh, it turns out my opponent did hit a cathartic reunion, and I did interact with the dredgers, and they did scoop the game, and we are going to 3-0, 4-0, something out and O. I think we're four and O. I think this is match five. Uh, yeah, Gigantha Mirror, Dragon's Rage Channeler. So, immediate thought is like prowess. Then I see Drown in the Lock, and now I'm like, ah, uh, no longer prowess. So they do go for the double bobble. Um, I say this so often. You've got the double bobble. Playing the first bobble and cracking it on me, I'm completely okay with. Because especially if you flip the top card off with Dragon's Rage Channeler, you want to inform whether you want to draw that next card. Got it. No issue whatsoever. The second bobble, there is no reason whatsoever to crack that second bobble on your own turn because hand disruption exists in the game of magic so that mishra's bobble that second bobble there are obviously exceptions to this like if you're playing mutagenic growth or something and you want to try to save the channeler then sure crack the bobble but if you're not running mutagenic growth and you're not running force of negation no reason to crack that second bobble because all you're doing is drawing the card into my turn, giving me the chance to cast hand disruption, even in the blind game one to potentially take that card that you drew. If it was something impactful, uh, if you bobble on my upkeep, you get the same information. You get to draw the card on your turn. Uh, you get access to it before your draw step. So if it is an instant and you do want to be able to cast it on your upkeep to trigger Dragon's Rage Channeler, you can still do that. But you protect it from hand disruption. And there's no reason not to do that because you literally cannot do anything with that card on my turn. 
It does no benefit to you to have access to it. It's only the downside of me potentially having hand disruption to take it. So, bobble on your opponent's turn. Don't bobble on yours. Uh, opponent goes for the fetch on the channeler. Gonna go ahead and bolt the first one. I wanted to try to bowmaster one of these, but I'm not gonna pass up a chance to like prevent an extra scry. Surveil, sorry. Then we get to Thoughtseize, take their breach. They do have a Ragavan and a Drown. I took a calculated risk here where I said my opponent's got two cards. They've got Drown and Lock and an Unknown. They didn't drown my Ragavan. So they're banking on this Ragavan hitting something or maybe they drew a one mana interaction spell. But then they would have just Killed my Ragavan, I think. I don't think you would offer up the Ragavan for a trade. Um, they attack in, and I decide, okay, I'm going to let my opponent hit me with the Ragavan because they get one look at something good. If they miss, I get to untap with Bowmaster for their Ragavan, Spell Pierce for their Drown and Lock, my Ragavan attacking in. Really great position to be in. Um, so of course that means they hit another channeler and completely shut that plan down. Since I drew another Ragavan, I decided to go for, uh, attacking in and try to like Bowmaster down the channeler, but opponent decided not to block. So now we're at channeler, channeler, V me. They've got a drown. They've got a Ragavan. I've got... Bowmaster that's going to get countered. And then my only out is finding another removal spell so I can kill both channelers here. Uh, alas, I do not. So we move on. I could attack in and try to stem the bleeding. New. We talked about sideboarding in the mirror already. Um, game one in the mirror is a lot of luck base. Like, there's a few decisions you make here and there, but for the most part, it's, hey, I saw threats that lined up, or I saw interaction that lined up, and that's about all you can do is hope that the things line up the right way. And an example would be like, hey, I saw bolts and I saw shadows. Okay. I saw bow masters. I saw dragon's rage channelers with delirium. Um, I saw drown in the locks. I saw shock lands and ragavans. Like you just hope things line up the right way. Sideboard, however, in the, the Grix's mirrors, I think is a lot more intricate, a lot more decisions being made, a lot more like micro adjustments. So pretty bad scenario for us here. Opponent does have like we have the fluster storm for the thought seas on turn one. Them having the second thought seas for the ragavans a little rough and then being able to untap with um Untap with their iteration plus Pierce. But we got a Bowmaster. They got a Bowmaster. Everybody got a Bowmaster, but we got triple Drown in the Lock. And honestly, I think I will take triple the Drown in the Lock over a lot of other things in this game. So, get to Bowmaster the down. Yeah. Bowmaster down there, Bowmaster, which makes another blocker for the Shadow. I'm fine attacking in because I've got the unlicensed hers. I've got the orc army. I've got drown in the lock. Like I've got a lot of ways to stop this shadow from hitting me in the face, which is the ultimate goal. Uh, I decided to, on my turn, to attack with the bowmaster, not the token, so that I could hold up like flashing in this bowmaster, make a new token after I chump block with that one. 
but with these bolts, we're just trying to like get a little ping damage, get a point or two across. I was really hoping to find the third land so I could like protect the lightning bolt. Uh, but ultimately, I'm at a relatively safe life total. If my opponent does go for something scary like an underworld breach, I can respond to it. And eventually, I decide like, hey, either you got the, the counter spell or you don't. But the more cards you show me, the more I'm going to believe you don't have it. Uh, so this is game three of match five. Um, reasonable hand, like channeler plus bobble. So if they do have a thought season, take my channeler. I still got bobble. If they thought season, take my bobble for whatever reason, I got a whole bunch of impactful spells and just hope I hit the land. Then obviously your opponent's starting with a channeler of their own instead of a ragavan is fantastic here. So now I don't have to worry about my opponent like hitting me with a Ragavan this turn. So we bobbled on their turn, which means our card is protected from bobble. So they don't, or protected from Thoughtseize. So they don't know about this lightning bolt right now. Pretty important, actually. Uh, decided to just fire off my Bowmaster, my second Bowmaster, while they're tapped out. And we're just going to go on like a string of drawing Bowmasters, apparently. Which isn't exactly a bad thing here, like going wide around most of what they can have is, is pretty nice. And then shutting off this Mishra's Bobble, because there's zero chance you sack the Bobble into the Bowmaster right now, because... Hey, that's just like a free two damage for me if you do. I'd actually be presenting lethal if they crack that bobble. We're going to go to their turn. Bowmaster, my bowmaster. You see what I was talking about in match one, where the mirror is just like 30 minutes of bowmaster, your bowmaster, bowmaster, your channeler, bowmaster, your ragavan, bowmaster, your second bowmaster. Well, I bowmastered your bowmaster that bowmastered my bowmaster. And like, brah. <laughs> so bowmaster, this bowmaster, tack in, and opponent actually ends up taking it, which I thought was crazy against the lightning bolt deck. Uh, but again, I'm not firing off this lightning bolt because my opponent was representing blue mana. Didn't want them to have a spell pierce and just a long, uh, like make the game drag on. So pass to their turn. They go for iteration. I guess iteration just like missed on whatever relevant thing they thought they needed to hit. So uh, yeah, we take it down. 5-0. and oh. Beating the mirror twice. Beat Yawgmoth really nice. Beat Scam. Beat Dredge. Have no idea how we beat Dredge, but I'll take it. Uh, anyway, hope uh, hope the video helps some. Like Grixis, Grixis is cool. Like Grixis will always be one of my favorite shadow archetypes. No argue, no argument. Like I've been on Drown in the Lock since the day that card dropped in Eldrain. Absolutely love it. One of my favorite cards in current modern. I'm not as big of a fan of Underworld Breach. I do think Grave Hate is like pretty rampant and modern with like endurances, uh, unlicensed hearses, random saga decks running like main deck Nihil spell bombs, things like that. Uh, Broxa, I do think it's a lot better because I think when Underworld Breach is dead, it's just dead. When Croaks is dead, it's still a two mana ditch a card. Like a bad Raven's Crime. But that's still live cardboard. And I do think if Bowmaster really takes up in popularity, that Croaks could be a really good answer to that. I also think that Ledger Shredder is not bad into Bowmaster. And I'll kind of give the the breakdown here. So if I have a Ledger Shredder, like let's say it's turn two, I'm on the draw. 
I play out a Ledger Shredder and I go to play a Bobble and you flash in your Bowmaster. Then I trigger off my Ledger Shredder, draw my card. You ping me for one because there's no reason to have it enter the battlefield, ping the Shredder, uh, ping again, ping the Shredder because that's just not doing anything. Uh, let's say I discard a live card. Now I've got a 2-4 Ledger Shredder that isn't dying to Bowmaster pings. It's outgrown the army pretty sizably. I've gone about my game plan. I've got the board locked up. And now there's like this incentive for you to cast two spells on your turn, which will trigger the Bowmaster. But I'll just be making my... Uh, my ledger shredder bigger at the same rate as your army, assuming I'm discarding something uh, non land. And as soon as I find like any sort of removal spell for a one, one bowmaster, then that completely stops. And you just got like a vanilla army and I've got a ledger shredder that's as big as if not bigger than that army. So I don't think that like playing ledger shredder or the fact that ledger shredder exists in the format means Bowmaster is some like lights out card the same way that I didn't think that the fairy uh, the fairy that drew when your opponent drew their second card is live. So just keep that in mind. Other than that, the mystical dispute, I don't mind, but I don't know if there's enough matchups to really make me want it. Like, obviously, it's good against things like Teferi and Omnath, but those decks now have access to uh, Delighted Halfling. So you got to be careful about overloading on counter spells. Also, I think Turok is just like 10 times better in those matchups. So I really like seeing two Turok here. Holigan's Command's not bad. I think, personally, I think Holigan's Command's like way past its heyday in modern. Um, it's cool as like a value piece. Maybe you get to blow up an artifact, get back a Bowmaster, ping something else, and it feels good. But I think the artifact decks that are popular are just like too fast, too resilient. So I wouldn't mind see the, seeing that just be like an Alpine Moon to fight over uh, Sagas a little bit more. Or with Tron on the rise, thanks to the One Ring, having access to Alpine Moon in the board can be a very, very big positive right now. Uh, Chalice, really good against Living End, and that's definitely on the rise with the new Land Cyclers. So be on the lookout for that. Um, other than that, yeah, I think at least for the next few weeks, if you're thinking about playing Grixis or picking it up, giving it a shot, I would definitely have a good plan for the Mirror. Um, if I play Grixis again in the near future, I'm going to find room for some number of Kroxa to help fight over all the Bowmasters. But I would almost get to the point of saying that I think Ragavan post board in the mirror is unplayable because between a Holy Heat, Lightning Bolt, maybe Fatal Push, Bowmaster, Drown and Lock, opposing Dragons, Rage Channelers. You're just not connecting with Ragavan uh, consistently. If you want to keep a couple in, I think that's fine. But the first Bowmaster that your opponent sees, Ragavan is like out of the game because you're not going to waste two removal spells to kill the Bowmaster and the Bowmaster token just to try to get through with the Ragavan. And me Bowmastering my opponent's Bowmaster doesn't care, take care of the tokens. Like, Ragavan's still not getting through in that scenario unless they draw more cards. And that's usually not happening because all you've got is four baubles and then maybe the occasional, like, um, Fiery Islet. So, yeah, hope that helps out. As always, if you're enjoying the content, enjoying the commentary, feel free to leave a subscription on the YouTube channel. I have no idea what percentage of my viewers are subscribed, but as long as it gets up to a thousand, I'm thrilled and we can keep focusing on making more content like this. Otherwise, hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay safe. Enjoy some good food and company. Get ready for a happy 4th of July weekend. And I will catch y'all back live later. Adios for now.